All righty. Okay. So once again, um, my name is Nicole Waite, and I am an employment specialist here at the University of Kentucky uh, in the STEPS office uh, in human resources. And so I've been working here um, in STEPS uh, since 2017. I came from UK Healthcare, worked in nurse recruitment. And now I've, uh, well, I should say since then, I've joined the HR team. I've been here ever since then. So I work with a lot of the retirees here at the University of Kentucky in their transition to STEPS um, alongside my coworker, Kirsten McKinley, who is on here today. She will be assisting with the chat box and asking some questions. Um, there's also a link that's available that Kirsten has created for um, anyone who's thinking about retirement, it's just like a, a informational uh, document that you can um, fill out and that allows us to see who was actually interested in STEPS opportunities. And so, as I mentioned, that'll be towards the end. So let's see, okay, looks like she went ahead and put that in the chat box for you, but we'll mention that again at the end. Alrighty, so we're gonna talk about post-retirement and temporary employment benefits of working in a steps position, the transition uh, to steps, the depart different departments and positions that we hire for, which is pretty much any department. Uh, we're just going to name a few for you. A brief introduction about what well, brief information about parking and transportation and then contact information, not just for uh, the steps office, but also for our um, retirement benefits team. All righty. Okay, so of course, as many of you know, the University of Kentucky has been around since 1865. We are the University of Kentucky, one of the largest employers in the region. Um, throughout your career, you have made a difference in the lives of Kentuckians being a part of the University of Kentucky. And so post-retirement positions give you the opportunity to continue doing meaningful, meaningful work as well as staying engaged with the university. The STEPS office is UK's internal temporary staffing department and has staffed temporary positions for all kinds of uh, positions across campus and healthcare for over 40 years. And uh, just a little uh, note, th note here for those who do not know, STEPS was actually established in 1978. So we've been around for it for quite a while. Okay, and so you may already know that there are two ways, if you don't know, there are two ways to return to work after post-retirement. One is through a board of trustees post-retirement appointment. Uh, the other is through temporary employment. And so um, if you want to know a little bit more about that, let's see here. I would say a post-retirement appointment, I should say, just for an example, may be used in a limited number of cases. You know, in the event, um, let's say there's an essential need for a university program or office or when otherwise impossible or practical, practical to fill a position uh, for someone who's fully qualified. So such a person or full-time appointment is restricted to former staff employees who have who have elected to retire and require specific prior approval by the Board of Trustees and is made for a period of one year uh, not exceeding. Uh, a retiree may be employed as a temporary employee to perform duties for which fee schedules have been established and approved by the provost or the executive vice president's president for finance and administration. STEPS is a part of the University of Kentucky team. Uh, for those who do not know, although STEPS does mean student temporary employment placement services, we do staff employees, regular employees, not just students. Alrighty, so as I've mentioned, STEPS is a great way to continue your career at the University of Kentucky. <clears throat> Oh, excuse me there. Okay, so if you, let's say here, if you work for the first year of your retirement and your health, your health plan, sorry, your health care plan costs will remain the same as prior to your retirement. And of course, if some of that had changed, I'm definitely going to give our benefits uh, team a chance to clarify. Um, this is not dependent on the number of hours you work. Uh, if you work past your first year of retirement, Healthcare plan costs can change depending on the number of hours you've worked or the level of coverage. However, averaging at least eight hours of work per week can reduce your healthcare costs. If you're hired prior to January 1st, 2026, and retiring with 15 or more years of regular continuous service. 
So just some things to highlight there with STEPS. Um, of course, it's a wonderful opportunity again uh, for post-retirement. Both full and part-time opportunities are available. Um, flexible scheduling, competitive pay, and of course, the retiree health insurance. And we'll talk a little more about the uh, opportunities both full and part-time. So I think this is the meat and potatoes that everyone wants to know about most of the time about the transition to steps and some tips to transition into steps. How does that happen? Who initiates it? Things like that. So one of the first things uh, when I receive calls from, um, you know, employees that are even considering or just thinking about retirement in the future, uh, one of the things that I mentioned to them is to talk with a retirement officer, you know, while asked if they've talked to a retirement officer to understand how working in post retirement will affect them because each individual is different. There's a, you know, it's, it's a case by case um, situation there. So talking to that retirement officer uh, would be the first step. Um, you, you will want to consider your age of retirement, how many hours you would like to work, what your level of coverage would be, et cetera, et cetera. Many retirees continue to work in the department that they retire in, um, you know, or retire from, I should say. Um, but not all. It's not it's not required, but but many do return just to do a little help around the uh, department for the supervisor and director. If you would like to return to your current department, you will want to talk with your manager about that uh, or the department administrator to determine if there is a business need for the position. It is also important to ensure there is an agreement on the scope of work, rate of pay, and schedule expectations to onset. All righty. And so let's see here a little bit about that. Uh, I feel like there's always questions about that. So let's say um, you decide that, you know what, I don't want to work in my department. So I often get a question, um, well, what if I want to work, you know, and I don't know, let's say you're in nursing and you decide that, you know what, I don't want to do anything bedside anymore. What's out there for me? So, uh, you know, one way um, to or to say one thing to consider about is all the different people that you've met and networked with. And if there's a department that you feel like, hey, you know what, I want to scale back, I would like to do something different, networking with different supervisors, uh, just speaking with them to see if there's actually a need. Maybe you've always wanted to work in the children's hospital or ophthalmology, you know, just throwing some things out there or even on campus, just speaking with those, uh, su you know, supervisors or leaders in those departments to see if there is a need, um, even if it's short term. That's one great way to to present yourself out there if, if you don't desire to go back into your department. So once it is determined what department you will be going back into, um, your supervisor would then need to put in a request for um, employment uh, to employ you, I should say, in a steps role. Those requests do have to be approved, uh, especially when, when uh, speaking about healthcare. Those requests do have to be, be approved by leadership through our um, employment system position review. And so once those um, approvals are completed, they then come to steps and we help with the onboarding process. But prior to the onboarding process, once again, when we receive questions, just a one-on-one, -on -one, um, we kind of go more in depth about uh, any help that the supervisor may need or the leader may need with navigating. So we have HR staff and specialists available also um, who help to put in requests for steps positions or talk to you a little more about the type of work that you would like to go into or the supervisor, I should say, about the type of work, um, pay, all those different things to be considered. All righty. Okay. And so as we've already talked about things to consider, the, the hourly weights, um, Definitely want to mention here, this is a big question, whether or not uh, bullet two there, STEPS employees are only paid for time worked. Um, that is true. You know, once, once you transition into a STEPS role, there's no rule for vacation or anything like that. And um, glad that I brought that point up, that that is also something to consider before transitioning into a STEPS role. Um Vacation payout is something that is usually completed and needs to be completed. It should be completed, actually, because your retirement uh, should already be done before you transition. But there are some um, employees, uh, which alludes to bullet three there, um, who transition and literally 
don't take a break. Some employees would like to take a break or take a short vacation, but some employees, there's not a gap in employment and they would like to continue on and that is okay. But there must be at least one day of separation between your retirement date and the return to work date. So a lot, you know, a, a marker many times is using that end of the pay cycle. A lot of us here know about the end of the pay period and pay cycle here. Um, so that's usually a good marker that we'll use um, because, of course, we know the end of a pay cycle is usually on a Saturday and starts again on a Sunday. So let's say it does end on a Saturday um, that you would not be able to start on that Sunday, even though it begins the next pay cycle. Um, you wouldn't be able to start again until that Monday, if that makes sense. So um, and then, of course, if there is anyone that is paid monthly, then of course there are other um, rules in place and we would just need to talk one-on-one -on -one to navigate a, a, the best start date for you with, um one, once again, of course, you would speak with the benefits, the retirement benefits office, and we would also um, speak with our payroll office to determine the best start date for you and then um, reach out to you and your supervisor. So the last bullet here, bullet four, a new I-9 may be required. Um, there are some, um, well, of course, there's some paperwork to be considered, uh, not just an I-9, but um, also pre-employment screening and background checks. And someone may say, why in the world would I be doing that? I understand. You know, we've been here for years, so why would we have, why would we have to do that again as we transition? Um, and so the thing is, is that once you separate, because there is a separation action that happens, and once you separate from the University of Kentucky, whether it's retiring or just leaving the university in general and coming back um, in the event that your pre-employment screening is um, over a year old, then we have to uh, consider rescreening. And so um, that's, you know, it, it's unfortunate, but it's actually just one of those rules that we have to follow. Um, so if you started prior to the fall of 94, and I-9 may not have been needed. And so that's why we have to uh, look to see if you need to do an I-9 again. And so the, uh, some people do follow, some employees, I should say, do fall in that window. And so we be, we're we really careful with checking uh, with the rec uh, employee record, uh, employment records and SAP to see whether or not you've completed that I-9 before um I mean, sorry, if you complete that I-9 before, and if not, then when when you when you're invited in to complete paperwork, uh, we will provide you with information on what documents that are needed to come in to complete an I-9. All righty, so just a little bit more about steps here for anyone who um, may have joined us late. Step is, step, steps is a UK's own inter internal staffing department, sorry about that, and has been operating since 1978. The steps, teams, the steps team hires over 1,000 employees each year uh, and have employees in more than 330 different departments across campus and throughout healthcare. And that does not mean just here in Lexington. Um, we hire, we have extension offices, uh, any place where there's UK healthcare steps is able to help staff. Okay, so our employees work in just about any job title, job role, from patient schedulers to HVAC technicians, clergy members, warehouse workers, pharmacy techs, golf cart mechanics, et cetera. Anything that you can think of. Uh, I'll also tell people if you're really curious about a position or know of a role that, hey, you know what? Um, I have the skills to do this or this is something I want wanted to always um, try out. Using our search engine, you know, even before you go into retirement and using the search engine on our UK jobs page uh, is a great way to look, uh, research, I should say, and filter out um, interest. So you can put in keywords there um, for those that may not have applied, you know, use that application system in a while. You can go in and put in keywords and um, it'll pull up different jobs um, that may, you know, be of interest. And you can read some of those job descriptions, things like that. See if it's something that may be a good fit for you. Um, and of course, we have Google, but we have all of that here uh, on our application web page too. So you can look at some of those jobs that may interest you. Alrighty. And so some common jobs, I would say that uh, for healthcare, and these are definitely just to name a few, but these are just some common ones that we have helped to staff for. Uh, healthcare positions are usually in high demand, of course, and, and that has definitely increased since COVID. Um, but 
some popular ones, of course, are registered nurses, patient registration staff. Um, you know, as I mentioned, if you've been a nurse and you don't want to do bedside again, this may be something that you're thinking about going into or even a medical assisting position, um, licensed healthcare professionals. We still have, you know, healthcare professionals that leave a position, but additional help may be needed in the department. And so they'll come back through steps, even in that same role, but they'll just come back in steps. Uh, let's see here. We always have a high demand for people who have skills, such as business officers, um, you know, payroll duties, those who know how to use SAP, Epic, et cetera. You know, those skills are really, really essential and um, valuable for the University of Kentucky. So having those skills, you know, like I said, we're, we're able to uh, help um, with uh, placement in different departments. Oh, don't want to fail that we do, don't want to fail to mention, I should say, that we also do help to fill for clinical and ambulatory areas. So those Monday through Friday day shift type of jobs. All right, some of our campus campus positions that I don't want to fail to mention um, that we staff for. And once again, these are only a few. There are several. And the best way to know, once again, would be uh, visiting our HR uh, jobs webpage. And so staff, for, staff support positions, IT, fiscal affairs, things like that. These are just, like I said, once again, just a few jobs that we have out there. And so if you're working in healthcare and you would like to try the campus side, you know, like I said, take a look and vice versa. Or once again, if you want to stay in your role and help with transitioning, um, maybe someone who's going to backfill for your position uh, or going to be hired into your position. Um, that also happens. Supervisors will keep that person around as a retiree, whether it's long-term or short-term, to help with that transition and help with training and development for their new placement. Um, sometimes we do, I don't want to fail to mention, remote work. I think that's a common question that we get, whether or not we offer um, remote or if we have remote positions. We do. We do. Um, let's see here. Uh, that is highly sought after, though. I do want to mention that. It's not something that we just keep to the side. That remote work is a highly sought after position, but we do have some positions that are hybrid or remote. Righty. Okay, so the parking and transportation, and of course, this is... Um, uh, this information is actually on the parking and transfer, uh, transportation website. I just pulled this for you guys. I thought it would be really good to have it in a slide just so you that you know that it's there, um, that University of Kentucky retirees are eligible for a reduced parking rate on campus. Um, individuals with an e-retiree permit may park in any intermediate E-lot, K-lot, or E-K area. Uh, and so the rates look like the rates are same, the same from last year, Um from last year to the next uh, 2024, from 2023, 2024, from 2024 to 2025, which is an annual cost of $126 and free if you retire prior to July the 1st, 1995. And so that's a, just a little information about that. And so for the next couple of slides here, I'm actually going to ask Terry, um, can I answer to speak a little bit about uh, returning to work as a retiree. So let me go ahead and slide over to that. Okay, Terry, are you able yes. to? Yes. All right. Hi. Perfect. Hey. Hi, everybody. Thanks, Nicole. So um, if you retire from the university, university, you can either come back through steps, and most employees, it would be through steps. We see very few post-retirement appointments, those are usually faculty positions because they have to go through approval processes through the pro provost and board of trustees. But if you're a staff employee, it's, you know, it's common for people to retire and come back to work. Um, before I get into like insurance costs, if you are planning a steps position following, following your retirement from UK, please inform the retirement specialist that you're working with and benefits so we can discuss with you the eligibility and timing considerations for reduced health insurance. Um, I think that would help you a lot when you're also talking to the steps office. Um, if we don't know that, we can't best advise you after the fact. It might be a surprise to some. Um, but anyway, if you are coming back through steps and you're working 20% or more of a FTE or greater, um, you 
will get reduced health insurance costs if you return to work before three months after you've retired, so no later than three months, you get the same employee insurance plan and rates. But if it's after three months, it's reduced rates for working retirees and dependents if you were eligible, if you were um, eligible to retire before January 1st, 2006. If after 2006, it's going to be a higher rate. Um, and then if you're age 65 plus, you're Medicare eligible, um, Anthem, it has to be your insurance. So you'd have to be with one of the employee plans, which is UK HMO, UK PPO, for example. I don't think I can advance the slide if you don't mind to do that for me, Nicole. Okay. Now, like I said um, as in the prior slide, if you return to work on the three-month window, you receive the same employee plan rates. This is due to the national policy for the Affordable Care Act. Um, if you're rehired with steps after three-month window, then these rates apply. This table shows you cost ranges. So the specific amount is, is going to depend on whether or not you're covering you only or you and your spouse or your entire family. Um, so looking at the green area, these are folks that were initially hired after January 2000, at January 1st, 2006. You're not eligible for a health subsidy, but if you look at the orange colored rates, um, these are folks eligible to retire um, prior to January 1st. Of, well, not prior to January 1st, 2006. Let me correct that. So that is for folks that were hired prior to January 1st, 2006 and gets a health credit. So a retiree who, re who retired with getting the health credit and working 20% or more, you're only paying $45 for the HMO, for example. But if you're adding dependents, um, that higher end, that $1,136, is if you're covering the whole family. So your cost is going to depend on whether or not you're adding dependents. Um, now, on the other part of it, the green side um, or the green area, these are fit folks that were hired prior to January 1st, 2006, not eligible for a health subsidy, retiree only is $781 a month. And these rates can increase every year during open enrollment periods. And I'll also add that you could also continue your coverage for dental and vision benefits. And for the most part, it's the same plan, same cost, unless you have UK dental insurance. If you don't mind, advance that slide for me, Nicole. Um, some important contacts and benefits. Obviously, we want you to work with a retirement specialist. If we have this information um, prior to your retirement, we're retiring you, getting your benefits set up. Um, if you're also corresponding with steps, we can certainly clear up any confusion with those costs of insurance and what that would look like for you. Um, if we're not available, obviously you can call our main customer service line. Um, we always have someone available Monday through Friday between the hours of 8 and 5. They can answer most general questions. Um, so the retirement specialist besides myself, Coleman Simpson and Juliet Souders, um, we have a retirement email, retirement at uky.edu. Best way to reach one of us because we share that email address. Um, and then for retiree billing, we want you to know that Joshua Baber is a retiree benefits administrator in our office. So once we retire you and you are working through steps, you're getting insurance, still getting our insurance. Um, any future changes with your health plan and your insurances and when the steps is ending, Joshua would be a really good name and contact to have. But obviously, you could also talk to us in retirement. We work very closely with Joshua. And then any medical claims issues, Debbie Martin, if you've ever talked to a benefits advocate, it's Debbie Martin, um, can always get involved and help with any issues with um, your medical claims. All right. And we'll turn it back to you, Nicole. 
All righty, Terry. Thank you very much. All right. Okay, so thank you, Terry. Once again, thank you uh, for giving us that insight on the benefits. And so, okay, so um, just to kind of piggyback off of what uh, Terry was talking about as far as contacts, um, we have two employment consultants here that will work directly with you if you, you know, maybe have some interest or see some jobs out there that you've applied to and you're, you just want to know a little bit more about it. Some, some jobs that have already posted for steps. Um, our healthcare consultant is um, Miss Roxanne Ruth and you can reach Roxanne there at roxanne.ruth.uky.edu. And for our campus departments, we have Cynthia Byers. And uh, you can reach Cynthia there at cynthia.byers.ek. Sorry, cynthia.byers at uky.edu. Uh, we also have our HR specialists that are not listed here, but I believe I have it listed at a, on, a, on a closing slide, which once again, my, I have myself, Nicole Wade, my uh, partner, Kirsten, who is on the uh, presentation today, and then our other coworker, Alex Talbert, we all help to um, staff. Alex and I actually help with um, retirees for healthcare. Kirsten helps on the campus side. All righty. So let's see here before we get into some questions. I definitely want to let you all know that the University of Kentucky is increasingly the first choice for staff to pursue their passions and their professional goals. So we don't ever want to lose sight of that. And so during your career at UK, the university has been recognized, you know, in four, you know, of course, Forbes magazine. I know a lot of people have seen that um, insight into diversity. Uh, and definitely ranked among the top 30 campuses in the nation for LGBTQ and in um, and safety, the Chronicles for Higher Education, so forth and so on. All righty. So I think we went through that a little fast, faster than we thought, but we have room for some questions here. Um, and it looks like some of the questions have already been added into the chat. Um, leave, let's see here. Some of the questions here, I believe someone had mentioned or asked what an I-9 actually was. Um, I actually put that in the chat there, but just so any, for anyone else that may not know what an I-9 is, an I-9 is a, it's a federal document that we, um, you know, that is required, I should say, by the you know, you know, the U.S. Uh, for employers to verify the identity and, and employment author authorization for all employees. Um, let's see here. I see another question here, and I'm not sure if everyone can see that. Um, are UK STEPS employees paid monthly or biweekly? That is a really good question. So STEPS employees are paid biweekly. We do follow the University of Kentucky pay cycle. So it's not a different pay cycle. Um, the information that you provide for payment, it is the same that you have now. So nothing is, we're not a different entity at all. It's, it's it's the exact same. Um, and just to add to that, and transitioning to steps, you would keep your, not only your same uh, direct deposit that if you would like, but this is actually a chance for you to update that if you would like. Um, but the same direct deposit, um, like I said, the same bi-weekly pay cycle, link blue, person ID, email address, none of that changes. The only thing that may change um, some accesses, depending on how long your separation is, some accesses may change, but of course that is restored once you are rehired or once you begin working um, through your steps position. Let's see here, I'm gonna go through here and see if we have any other questions. Okay, there was a question here. Uh, if you're 65 plus, would you qualify for UK Medicare Advantage supplement regular, regular to supplement regular Medicare? And we have an answer here. Yes, depending on the years of service, if work if working steps and working 20% or more of your FTE. Um, let's see here. You have to be on Anthem Insurance. Okay. Will the slides be posted somewhere afterwards? Absolutely. I know we went through this kind of faster than we thought, even with the questions. And once again, I want to reiterate for those who joined us late, uh, the slides will be shared. They're, they're going to be shared with the benefits office. Um, also, it was um, 
recorded. And so even just a presentation, if you want to go back, if we maybe went over something a little too fast or you didn't catch a portion of the recording today, it will be shared. Uh, it has been recorded and will be shared. Okay, on the benefits website, I believe we've already said that. Okay. Okay, I have a question here. Let's see here. For someone who has worked at Eastern State Hospital for eight years, which is under UK. In the case I've been employed since July. Let's see, for retirement, does the time start? Management group, thanks. Okay, so this was... Okay, so for the uh, employee who asked about the Eastern State time, I think that is definitely a one-on-one -on -one question. If you would like to um, contact, and then we have the contact information listed here um, for the benefits office. If you would like to contact the benefits office to see how the retirement, how, how that applies to you directly. Okay, we have another question here, which is a really good one. If someone does not know their hire date, of course, speaking directly with your supervisor, they should be able to pull that info, grab that information um, from SAP. But of course, feel free to contact uh, our records department here and they can give you more detailed information. If in the event your supervisor or someone is not able to provide that information, records actually probably would be the most accurate way to retrieve that information if you would like to know your hire date. All righty, let's see here. I'm looking through to see. It looks like most of the questions that we've had so far have been answered. If anyone has any other questions, if you want to stick that in the chat, hang around here for a moment. If you do not, thank you all for joining us today. And once again, the presentation will be shared. Let's see here. I have a question. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so glad. I know this once again, I know this went by pretty fast. I feel like I say it so much. It's really repetitious for me, but although it's repetitious for me, I certainly want to make sure that each one of you understand or have a better understanding of steps in post-retirement through steps, why, why it's required. If you hear one, someone say, no, you have to come through steps. You have to come through steps. Um, thank you. Thank you guys. I'm glad you all, um, Pulled a little something from this. Thank you again, Terry, for presenting. And once again, going to stick around while everyone's exiting and giving their thank yous. If you have any other questions, myself or my uh, coworker, Kirsten, want to answer those. Okay, at what point should you start the retirement process if you're retiring in 2028? Oh, that's a good question. I can answer that question. Thank you, Terry. Um, I'll chime in with some of these mm -hmm. um, retirement benefits type questions, but Thank I would you. say definitely reach out to the benefits office, retirement office, um, when you're within six months. If you're faculty, we, I mean, you're supposed to give us semester's notice, and so I would say even like just sometime before that semester, you're going to turn in your letter. But if you're a staff employee, I would say four months, six months would be good timing so that we can give you the most up-to-date information about your benefits and the health costs. Thanks, Terry. All righty, see, so let's see here. It stated that there are no minimal hours per week that are required to be worked. However, there was something said about a minimum of eight hours per week maximum benefits. Can you explain that, clarify that? I can answer that too. Thank so, you, I mean, from a health benefit standpoint, if you get the health credit and you want to stay on your Anthem insurance plan, it, it needs, the FTE needs to be set up at 20% or more. If you are over 65 and Medicare eligible and maybe you're on our Medicare Advantage plan and you don't want to go back to Anthem insurance because you do have to go back to Anthem if you're over 65 and already on that in Medicare plan, you want to keep your hours in FTE under 20%. Thank you, Terry. Okay, we have a question here about how long are steps positions good for? So that is a really good question. Usually when, once we, when we receive the approval for a steps position, that is all, already determined. And so most are uh, at least up to one year, but it can exceed in the event it does exceed up to one year. We do touch base with the department and the uh, employee to see um you know, if the employee still is still active, et cetera, uh, if we want to continue on with that position. And so it can vary um, to leave a short answer. It can vary. But that approval, that time 
of approval in the position, it usually already comes over to us, whether it's a six month, 12 month, year, whatever the case may be. But in general, but steps, that, once again, and that's for retirees, but even outside of retirees, um, that's kind of the the method that we will, you know, how we'll approach the uh, request as the time comes for the request. When it's almost coming to an end, we'll just touch base to follow up to see if that person still, see if that employee, I should say, is still active. Let's see here. If I retired at 62 with 12 years of employment with UK Healthcare, would I receive the employee health plan that I currently have as long as I return within three months of my retirement date? I'm not sure if you see that one, Terry, it's from Francis. Let's see here. Okay, it looks like the someone one that is um did someone answer okay. Yeah, I think someone answered that one. Juliet answered that one. Okay. Perfect. How can you find out the date that you were hired? Employee records actually would be the most accurate way if you want to um find out exact dates of hire in each position and, that you've held. Oh, go ahead, just, Terry. I was also gonna add. So if you're mm -hmm. sixty-two years of age and you have twelve years of the service, you don't qualify for retirement yet because you have to have fifteen consecutive years of service. But at sixty five you wouldn't be eligible. I would say any questions in the chat, if you're just questioning your retirement eligibility status, um, you should probably just email us and ask for a service check so we could tell you when you qualify for retirement. If there's any other questions here that we haven't answered or gone over that are not in the slides, let's see here. Okay, looks like that question was answered. Does 20% of post-retirement staff positions affect IRS MRD? Someone has. Okay, can you hold more than one staff position as long as it's under, yes, and under 40 hours? A uh, really great, great question. I'm glad you uh, um, asked that question. Yes, you can. Yes, there we currently have um, employees that work in different departments. We just need to make sure um, on our end, you know, we get into like call centers and billing, things like that. So we just um, need to make sure that we have the, the accurate information. And then, of course, when it comes to reporting time, we have some departments or employees report time using Chronos, which I know many people here may be familiar with. Um, and then we have our own electronic timekeeping system called Field Glass. And so depending on the departments that you're working for, we need to um, look into some other some other factors to determine um, how you enter time and things like that. But short answer, yes, it is possible as long as you're not working over 40 hours. Okay, it looks like uh, the email there, retirement at uky.edu is provided, like I said, for those questions um, that Terry had mentioned, if you're just trying to find out those general questions about when you can retire, et cetera, some more one-on-one -on -one questions that you may have. Okay. If the department approves phase retirement. Okay, looks like we answered that one. Thank you, Coleman, and so much. The retirement team is really on it. They're really answering these questions here. And so once again, you see how good they are at answering these questions and they will provide you the same feedback um, when emailing uh, the department. Let's see here. I have someone who is interested in me for steps. I am retiring January 2nd. When does the hiring supervisor have to make that decision? Oh, uh, for approval to get those things rolling at least within three months of my retirement date. What do you, that is a really good question. And thank you for ask, um, asking that question. I don't think I brought up as far as a time frame or how long an approval could take. Um, so this varies. And so the sooner the better. Um, if you're thinking about it, you've already went through the process of contacting the benefits office. You've already talked to your supervisor. Literally, there, there's not an, a time that's too early, let's say that, because when we receive the request, it's going to have your retirement date on it. And so um, you can go ahead as long as, like I said, as long as you have went through the process of speaking with the retirement office and your supervisor, we can go ahead and put that request in. I actually help some employees, current employees, on board for steps steps while they're actually in a steps role. So you don't have to be separated before we begin doing some of that paperwork for steps position 
uh, moving up to your official start date for steps. We just have to make sure that even though we're doing that paperwork on the front end, that we don't get you started before your retirement date. So that's the only hold up there. Let's see here, and someone probably will answer that. Are people hired after January 1, 2026, um, not eligible I mean, for reduced health? Okay, thanks. Yeah, I can, I can answer that question. So Thank the, you. the question about if you were hired after January 1st, 2006, not being eligible for redu reduced health cr credit. So that it, that is true. However, if you retire, you're eligible to retire because you're met the normal retirement rules. Um you, if you're getting right back on payroll within that three month period because of the Affordable Care Act, you will get the health subsidy for 12 months. Um, but that's only 12 months after that period. If you're not working 75% of an FTE, it's going to increase. Let us in retirement when we have a benefits meeting with you, help you understand that a little bit better. It's very confusing, the Affordable Care Act and how that works with folks that were hired after 2006. But there is there is a possibility you could get the health credit, but just for 12 months. Okay, so I, I, if we could save you guys some lunchtime, not sure if you joined us today for lunch, then I want to thank you. Thank you. Thank you for attending. Thank you for asking questions about steps. If you did not get a question answered, feel free to email us and contact us. Um, let's see here. I'm going to put some contact information here. I'm not sure if you want to. Uh, let's see here. There's a link, I should say. And of course, you can just find us. To search for uh, temporary employment on the HR webpage. Um, and of course, you have myself, Nicole Waite, employment specialist here. Once again, we have Roxanne Ruth and Cynthia Byers, employment consultants, Alex Talbert. Actually, you know what? Let's see if I can actually... Put this information in the chat for you guys. Let's see here. That might be a little too much for me to put in here, but I will definitely put my name again. How can you determine how much you will be paid per hour if you do post retirement? That is, um, okay, good question. That is something that is handled before it comes to us. So once you and your supervisor determine, hey, you know what, you're a good fit. We want to put you in a position here. The HR staff and specialists and the business partners on um, that side will actually help to determine uh, along with um Compensation, they'll help to determine uh, your pay, things like that. So that's something that's actually determined before we get on this side. Well, before you get on this side, I should say. But I am going to put my number and my email in the chat for anyone else has any other questions that you think of, feel free to reach out. And once again, you can find us on the HR webpage. Thank you all. Thank you, Terry. Thank you, the benefits team. Thank you all for attending today. Your questions were wonderful. I, I must say I, I that I, I don't have favorites, but by far you guys have been my favorite group. You've been so interactive and in asking questions. And that makes it much easier because we actually we're, we're giving you what's on the surface. And so by asking those questions, um, we're able to see, you know, what we what more we need to provide for future retirees and, and staff out there with questions we may need to be getting answered and putting out there for you. So thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, let's see here. Is there any more? Okay. Alrighty. Uh, alrighty. So you guys, once again, contact benefits, contact steps. If you have any questions, thank you for joining us today. This was great. And we will see you next time. Do not forget that the recorded session will be av available. Uh, we're going to send the recorded session to our benefits team. And so they'll, uh, if you want to go back to view, um, today's, um, presentation, feel free to do that. And once you go through, if some more questions come up, just reach back out. So as I just want to reiterate that as we exit and you guys have a great rest of your day and happy retirement for those who are looking. Happy retirement. We would love to have you here through steps. All righty. Bye.